for the activist group Pussy Riot, which has been publicly protesting Putin for about a decade. Nadia, it's good to have you back on the program. Uh, given your, your personal experience with Vladimir Putin's Russia, does, I mean, does his wrath have any limits in your mind? Uh, I think he went completely insane. Um, and um, honestly, nobody in Russia was expecting that he's going to invade Ukraine. Um, a lot of, I feel like a lot of American press was writing about it, but none of, um, none of my comrades um, in the press or in political circles um, see it coming. Um, so I feel like he totally lost his mind at the point when he um, um, invaded Ukraine. And so honestly, at this point, we're, we're not going to be uh, surprised uh, by anything, including um, using of nuclear weapons. You wouldn't be surprised if he did. Um, I mean, I would be, um, I would be disappointed if he did that because it's definitely really unfortunate for survival of human species, but I would not be surprised if he did it mm. because, um, you know, as, as noted in the article, he sees it as his, his historic mission. He said it multiple times that, uh, this is the biggest geopolit geopolitical catastrophe of the 20th century, um, the fall of Soviet Union. So he sees that he's role in life as Russian Tsar, as new Russian emperor, to restore his territories. And if he's going to fail that, he believes that he's going to fail his mission as a god, god providing Tsar. <laughs> um, he really lost his mind. He believes that he's sent by some higher forces to save Russia and to restore Soviet Union. In the Bloomberg article, they, they, uh, there's a quote, I'm going to read it. They said, senior officials have tried to explain to the president that the economic impact of the sanctions would be devastating, er erasing the two decades of growth and higher living standards that Putin had delivered during his rule, according to people familiar with the situation. Putin brushed off the warning, saying that while Russia would pay a huge cost, the West had left him no alternative but to wage war. Do you think there is any chance that he would take some sort of diplomatic off-ramp at, at this point? Or, or be satisfied. I mean, if if he ha if they have some victories in the southeast, do you think they would stop at that? I don't have much belief in that uh, because Putin has um, a philosophy of a thug, and um, if he he feels like if he is uh, compromising something, he is losing, which is not exactly. I mean, the global politics doesn't work like that, but that's that's exactly. For the last 20 plus years, I was saying that Putin has to go because he does have philosophy. He just has really black and white view of the world. Um, so I don't really think that he's uh, he's about compromises. But um, regarding people around Putin getting mad, I I would not. I'm not surprised reading um, reading all of the statements because um, most of those people they actually really love life. They really love uh, luxurious life, lifestyle, and one of the most important um, jobs of Alexei Navalny, who is uh, one of the Russian biggest uh, um, critics of Putin, who is in jail right now. He's my comrade and friend since 2007. One of his biggest uh, roles was to expose um, luxurious lifestyles of uh, Putin's closest cronies. Um, and they do love their life in um, Europe and the United States. They go to Miami to give birth to their children. They do not want to lose it. The, the last time we spoke, you told me about how some of your own family members believe what Vladimir Putin is saying, refuse to believe the pictures coming out of places like Mariupol. I talked to so many Ukrainian people who have relatives in Russia, loved ones, fathers, you know, mothers who don't believe what they are going through. Has, has I'm wondering just in your case, has there been any change in, in some of your relatives' mindset? Um, not really. I mean, people, people want to believe in something. So, um, they want to join. Um, they're, they're basically they're uh, they don't, they're devastated. Like nobody's happy about the war, right? So like nobody's happy that their country is in the war. But because um, they see sanctions, they see the Russian economy on the verge of collapse. They want to believe something, and they uh, they decide to believe they are uh, ideology of a strong man. And unfortunately, this is just a, a, a psychological law that unfortunately works often um, against Russian people who end up believing in uh, crazy lies provided by Russian propaganda. Yeah. Uh, Nadia Tolokunikova, I really appreciate talking to you. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, it's always interesting. Thank you. We're going to have more on the war in Ukraine later and its effects on one.